Good morning and salam sejahtera to everyone. Today our group would like to present about sago post harvest handling techniques and processing. My group members are me myself Julian Analayang, Joseph Ryan bin Malkus Japa and Isaiah John. These are the contents of our presentation which consists of introduction of sago and information on post-harvest handling techniques and processing practice in Malaysia including pros and cons which will be explained by me myself and third information on post-harvest handling techniques and processing practice overseas but relevant to Malaysia which will be presented by Joseph and suggestion on good practices or improvement on post harvest handling and processing technologies for sago which will be represented by Isaiah John first introduction of sago so as you can see on the figure it is it shows metrozylon species which is locally known as Rumbia. Rumbia is an indigenous to Southeast Asia regions such as Malaysia, Philippines, and Indonesia. Some important species used in sago production include Metrozylon rumpi, Metrozylon sago, Metrozylon longi spinum, and Metrozylon, Metrozylon silvestre. Sago palm tree growing condition and environment are wet growing condition and harsh, harsh swampy peat environment. This palm tree can tolerate wet growing condition and able to grow vigorously in harsh swampy peat environment according to Ruddell 1977. Uses of Sago Palm Sago Palm has various uses not only in starch production but also in food industry such as production of bread, vermicelli, crackers, biscuits and also tabaloi which is known as Melanau traditional food. So here in table 1 shows the estimated sago per hectare by countries. And here you can see Malaysia is the third largest sago production, about 94% in the world after Indonesia and Papua New Guinea. This is stated by Ista Laksamana et al. 2005, with estimated 59,000 sago per hectare. Second is post harvest handling techniques and processing practice in Malaysia, including pros and cons. Um, sago, sago palm has nine stages. The first stage is vegetative stage, <coughs> or locally known as sulur, age about one to four years. Stage two is trunk initiation, or locally known as Angkat punggung. Age is about four to five years. Stage three is twenty-five percent of trunk growth, or locally known as bibang. Age about five to seven years. Stage four is seventy-five percent trunk growth, or pelawe. Age about eight years. Stage 5, maximum, maximum trunk growth or pelawit manit, age about 8.5 years. Stage 6 is emerging inflorescence or locally known as bull bull, age 9 years. Stage 7, flowering or known as angau muda, age about 9.5 years stage 8 young footing or locally known as 
ang ngaw tua is about 10 to 11 years and the last stage is end cycle or mugun is about 12 years so when can sago palm tree be harvested the harvesting stage of sago palm tree is 8 to 18 years according to department of agriculture sarawak and it is depends on the soil fertility the more fertile the soil the shorter the time taken for the sago palm tree to be harvested so in malaysia the traditional method is being practiced in traditional method sago palms are fell and cut into sections using an axe or a chainsaw to ease transportation to extract to extract starch the stem will be split lengthwise and the pith is crushed and kneaded to release the starch before being washed from fibrous residue the ability of clean water is important to wash the starch from fibrous residue the starch is stored under water in the basket baskets made of sago palm leaflets as you can see in figure 2 it shows the the section split of the sago palm tree next is pros and cons the pros are storage underwater slows down deterioration of starch. All refuse remains in the growth. Only little soil fertility is lost from the field. Cons are low extraction rate and inferior quality in terms of purity and I would like to present about the information on post harvest handling technique and processing practice overseas but relevant for Malaysia. There are five types of technique and processes and the first one is nursery practice. Nursery practice are important to increase the survival and enhance the establishment of suckers. Freshly harvested suckers can be reused for planting. It was planted with the cut end of the rhizome covered in soil to prevent attack from the sago worm. Next, the planting point should be cleared of debris so that the sago palm suckers are in contact with the soil rather than sitting on the root masses. Avoid deep planting as it will minimize drowning during the heavy rain. Plant suckers is stacked to avoid them from being washed wash away by temporary flood or the flood itself. Slash weeding around the suckers was done twice a year during early growth stage of the sago palm. It is to reduce the competition of nutrient and space with the weeds and enables easier access and recycle of the nutrient from the slash weeds. The suckers growth is regulated to one for every 18 to 24 months. This promotes the strong formation and growth and reduces the competition between the suckers. Removal of dead fronts is also essential to increase aeration. Lastly, harvesting was done just before the flower initiation. It is to provide the maximum yield per unit area and allow the early reduction in the competition to other suckers that is in still developing. Now, I'm going to talk about the suggestion of good practice for improvement on the post-harvest handling and processing technology. First, bark removal. Bark should be removed carefully and as sparingly as possible as the inner layers still contain an abundant amount of starch. Usually, the bark its layer itself is less than 2.5 cm thick, although this also depends on the variety. 
Only care and attention by the barker can keep the starch loss to a reasonable minimum. Second, harvesting time. Avoid harvesting immature sago palm that has starch grain obtained are too little. When the leaf inflorescence first start to develop at its rising stage, the sago palm is considered to be matured near the flower initiation. Next is the processing water. Clean water that is free from heavy metal such as iron and copper should be used to reduce the level of polyphenol form. This kind of heavy metal can promote the oxidation of polyphenol that are usually present in the bowls in which it can dye the starch. Next is the log storage. Log should not be stored more than two or three days and at most to avoid spoilation of the starch quality. The log are suitable to be stored at water and not at the dry condition storage as it may spoil the starch quality through the microbial activity. Storage of wet starch. Starch should not be kept more than 24 hours as the starch grain may degrade if being kept in wet for too long. This result the pocket of gaze in the strain, which make it difficult for the settling and also reduce the starch quality. The starch should be treated with sulfur dioxide if there is no other opinion for the storing of starch. Next is sanitation. Equipment should be properly cleaned after each prolonged factory stop, and this can prevent the accumulation of microbial activity during the processing of the raw materials. Next is the sago waste. The sago waste from the starch extraction should not be burned or thrown into river as it may cause pollution to the environment, but instead it should be utilized to be raw material for organic fertilizer compost. Finally is the sieving out fiber. To eliminate the remaining fiber fragment, starch slurry should be passed through a filter not closer than 120 mesh before the sedimentation. The remaining fiber may play a role in the microbial degradation of the starch. This is the reference, that's all from me, thank you.